Welcome back to our series on continuing tools for robotics. I'm Jeff with SparkFun Electronics. Today what we're going to talk about is infrared. We're going to go through some of the most basic infrared sensors, how to set them up, and uh, look at a little example stuff on troubleshooting, how to figure out whether you're actually getting signals out of them. And at the very end of the video, we'll hook them up to an Arduino and do some serial read uh, to give you guys some sensor tools for robotics. So I'm using the most common infrared LED emitter pair that we offer in our catalog, 940 nanometers. That's the wavelength of light that the emitter emits, and the detector is tuned to that on this. Uh, one of the things as you move into more complicated stuff with infrared is some infrared has a carrier frequency. We're not going to talk too much about that today, but be aware that if you're mixing and matching infrared that they come in different frequencies. Um, today we're using the match pair, so that shouldn't be a problem. If I look at the emitter, it should have a yellow dot on the top, and then my detector has a red dot, and that's how I can tell which one is which when I pull them out of the bag, because they're tiny and they look almost exactly the same. So let's talk a little bit about the emitter. What I've done is set up a simple circuit here on this small breadboard with the emitter. And I want to make sure it's working. I'm going to troubleshoot each part of this puzzle one at a time um, just to give people some tools for how to look at this without fancy equipment. And then later on, we'll put it on the scope and look at it on the scope because that's kind of nice too. So the first thing I've done is like any LED in this circuit, we have a long lag and a short lag, and the long lag goes to positive. I've got a 330 ohm current limiting resistor in this, and I've got uh, four AA batteries in a battery pack, just powering this, and, and you'll see why we're doing this on separate breadboards in just a little bit. But I want to make sure that I'm actually getting infrared light out of this, and I can't see infrared. It's outside the visible spectrum. One of the ways I can do this is take my handy-dandy cell phone camera, and I can look through my cell phone camera, and I can actually see the purple light through the polarized filter on the cell phone camera. Now we took Greg's really fancy camera and we looked at it and we couldn't see the infrared light until we actually held a pair of polarized sunglasses up against the regular camera. So if you had a regular camera, you could hold a pair of polarized sunglasses in front of it and you should be able to see that purple light. This is the schematic for the emitter. There's also one on the product page at sparkfun.com. Let's move on to the detector. I've set up my detector circuit, and what I've done is built a really standard voltage divider. If you look at my drawing right here, I've got my supply voltage, and here it's nominal about 5 volts. We've got some old, weak batteries. It could have been 6, and I would have put a little larger resistor in there. But we've got supply voltage. I've got a 10K resistor, and then my detector, and I'm going to read right in the middle. The other way to approach that is with an LED. What I'm going to do is actually plug my LED in across the detector leg, matching my detector, and you can see it's on. The interesting part of this is, is as I move my emitter in close, the LED goes off, and as I move it away, it comes on. So this is normally high, and then in the presence of that 940 nanometer spectrum, it goes low. As a more tangible way to see what's going on with the infrared detector, I've hooked up the oscilloscope. And we can watch as it drops an analog voltage value as I move closer and closer and closer, and when I get right up on there, I'm almost zero. The nice thing is, is that we have an analog input on Arduino, and we can read that analog voltage as a distance. So what I've done is I've changed the orientation of my emitter and my detector so that they're now, instead of facing each other, they're now facing the same direction. And if I use something that's reflective, I can get reflected light back, and this is great for robotics. I've also hooked up that detector to the analog read port in Arduino so I can look at my screen, and as I move my reflective object in, I can see the change in my numbers on my reflective screen and I can write a piece of code that goes with that. So I can say if that value drops to below a certain amount, I'm probably up against a wall and I can turn off the motor on that side and let the robot crab away from that wall. So it's a really great object detection scheme. There's a bunch of links on the product page which describe object detection. Um, this can also be used for quadrature encoder if you use a little disk with black and white areas on it as something moves around in a circle you'll get different values back from the reflected value. So that's kind of the skinny on IR detectors and emitters and we hope that you can join us on the next one.